Hello and welcome to these videos about EcoStructure GeoSCADA Expert, the remote SCADA and telemetry software from Schneider Electric. My name is Steve and in this video we're going to look at the many ways GeoSCADA makes managing screen colours easier. Let's start with an internal analog and digital point. I've configured these with normal or event states and abnormal or alarm states. I'll add them to a mimic graphic choosing to display the current formatted value and state. By initializing the analog to 50, which is not set to be in an alarm value, and the digital to zero, also not an alarm state, both values will be displayed in black with a white background. When we look at the animations for color, we see that the simple default object properties of foreground, background and blink have been used by the drag drop operation. These are also the same color properties that are used for those database items when they're shown on a list. So where do these colors come from? By right clicking on the root group entry in the database bar, you can see where the system gets colors for the different states that objects can be in and you can change these colors. Actually, you can make changes for individual groups, but the usual approach is to change them system-wide. The colors in this list apply to objects and states depending on their type. I'm changing the normal background and foreground to two shades of gray. I need to reopen displays after changing the colors. You can take some time now to examine the list of colors that you can customize. For example, a deep blue is used for a remote control in progress indication. Similarly, some alarm rate related conditions such as alarm disabled, suppressed or responded states have got their own configurable colors in the same place. By changing these colors, we can instantly switch to a different look. This change embracing trends in situational awareness. Another technique is to use color objects in the database. They can be created, given a suitable name, and configured to any color, then used to animate display items. For example, this one is going to be used to set the color of a line on a mimic. The animation is done simply with drag drop and a selection of the line color property. Color objects can be used across all displays to enable global change. You can create a set of objects for different purposes on displays. And this set here is an example of colors for menus, plant and various items. But another separate use of custom color objects is to use them on point configuration. If a specific color is needed for an object state, you can attach a custom color and that will be used on both mimic displays and also on lists. So far, we've not discussed alarms, and alarm behavior involves colors in several ways. When an object enters an alarm state, its color is controlled by the severity configuration of that state. I'll set this analog point to the low severity alarm, and the foreground color and blink of the alarm severity are going to be used. You can see this on mimics, the alarm banner, and on lists, all from those settings. Alarm severity color settings are configured using server configuration tool. You can specify different colors for each severity and the colors that you specify are then used on the alarm list, alarm banner, mimics and lists. If an alarm on an object returns to normal and is not acknowledged, you'll also see the unacknowledged color. Note that here in the severity settings, you can also change alarm sounds alarm actions and the additional events raised when alarms take too long to be handled. Finally, let's look at customizing the colors of objects on displays using animations. I'll add a circle and select animations so that I can change the fill color. By editing the animation as a flowchart, you can add as many decision branches as needed 
and then edit each decision branch to animate by a point value or state. Each leaf of this tree can then be a static value or a database value, or in this case, a color. And controlling the point will cause selection of that color. And in this case, it will override any alarm state coloring. Here's a recap of the subjects covered this time. We looked at object colors and the color palette, custom color objects, point state colors, alarm severity colors, and then mimic animations and flowcharts. Goodbye, and please join me again.